Hi guys, I'm gonna try and do this tick and times video um, and I'm kind of a bit sick, I've been coughing my way through so which is why I did a lot of takes. Um, so I already uploaded like a version of this onto my IGTV so if you want to have a more quick kind of flip through game, look through that, I think it's like slightly more than 10 minutes. Uh, this is gonna be a more detailed explanation how to do some of these things in the uh, mini album and uh, but I also do it kind of like a uh, um, uh, a flip through as well the same way I did for that so here we go so this is a vintage themed uh, botanical spring um, uh, mini album I put a lot of papers from Tim Holtz but also a lot of papers that I had from my own stash um, at the same time um, uh, I really wanted to go for a more uh, uh, documentation sort of like uh, theme for this uh, which is not too new from the previous projects I do but this is different pen and paper you go. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the this thing which I'm really really happy about, uh, which is um how well the metallic uh, embellishments are taking on ink. I just want to show you guys how it looks like because the camera might not show it, but this is actually red. You see this, really vibrant red. It is really cool. And you really can't do this even with uh with acrylic paint because acrylic paint adds, adds so much body and the binder doesn't really bind that well even to some of the metal uh, embellishments. And so how I achieve this is actually through this product by Ranger uh, called the Patina. Uh, it's meant to be used with their Vintage uh, uh, collaboration um, with Sizzix. And I think the idea that they really had was to create a ink that can very that works really well with uh, thin layers of like a metal foil, and uh, which dyes and uh, stains non-porous surfaces. Which this is is non-porous surface, so it's actually made of a, um, a solvent. You can see here, Ooh, camera work, uh, ethylene glycol monobutyl ether. <coughs> and really, this is like a solvent to help actually. Um, bring the, the, the ink onto non-power surfaces, which is really cool. So you can see that the colors remain really vibrant. Um, otherwise, for most other products that we are used to, we probably can't be able to grab something like this. And it's actually a very pigment, pigmented look. It is not very... Um, uh, unlike alcohol inks, which is a bit more like translucent, this you really get pigment. And this is how I get like this really nice vintage, um, um, kind of like a yellow garnet color to show through. <coughs> Gosh. Yellows and the garnets it looks really nice when you do like um, I think the camera's not gonna be as well to pick this up, but this is really nice, nice deep red. But yep, yeah. and here I actually did some stamping with acrylic paint. So this is actually the distress paint, uh, mustard seed, and I just applied it onto uh, I use a paintbrush or you can use it like a dauber, whatever. Apply it onto your your rubber stamp because I don't think it works that well with the. Uh, with the silicone base or the photopolymers, um, and you stamp it onto um, the surface you want to have it grab on. And because this is baseboard, so is it you'll be able to have like acrylic paint really sit nicely on top of it, and you get these really cool, nice details, but also kind of like a smudgy sort of like artistic look. So it makes it look really cool because the colors obviously pull at different areas differently, so you get this really nice effect. Really like it. Um, the, this is the side, which is really simple, we can just put like a title on the side, and this is the back, very simple. And these metal corners are from Daiso. So here we go. So inside, to continue with the very document sort of uh, secondary theme, um, you'll see that there's a lot of flip-outs, pockets, um, and places where you can do a lot of journaling on. And um, I've used a lot of white cardstock on this. So any places with white would be really nice places to do journaling on and uh, places in which there's a more muted sort of like pattern paper would be kind of where um, your photos will be uh, placed in. And uh, here is a... Uh, I just stuck this down but basically this is uh, something to help hold the magnet closure in place. Um, but the other purpose for this also is that um, along the way you see a lot of uh, this photo mats or journaling cards that have this like nice collage sort of thing and this is how I use up my scraps. I made them into this like nice Frankenstein collage paper sort of thing, and I made them onto um, uh, a color that really brings out like the specific uh, elements in this. So there's a lot of yellows and 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 and, and creams in this. So using a kind of like a pale yellow um, um, light marigold, I would say, um, cardstock really helps to bring out the the color really well. And here is like another um, 
uh, please for putting photos and journaling as well. And and that's the thing, when you start backing like a lot of like your thick cut stock through with different pattern paper, it's really sturdy. So it's not like some flimsy uh, thing. Um, the drawback of that methodology, as you will see throughout, is that the, that the book's actually really thick. I actually had to drop to a lighter weight um, um, uh, craft cut stock as I moved through the mini album because I realized that the book was just not going to close if I'm just going to use very thick uh, cut stock. So here on this page uh, is also a nice place where I did like this really cool uh, method tag. This is actually ma magnetic and uh, this closes this gatefold in place and basically it's uh, places for journalings and uh, photos inside this uh, flip out. I'm gonna shift it up so in case it's kind of going out of frame. I'm gonna talk about the side loading pockets later but each of the signatures actually have a, a side loading pocket because I want to show you something really cool that I did with it and those who have seen the IGTV uh, a video will know what I did with uh, um, the mats inside. So here is uh, places for more journaling and photos and it's also stuck behind here in this pocket so yeah, technically you can even put more stuff in the pocket as well. And this flips out this way to have more places for photos and journaling and this place also holds like one of that uh, other um, collage um, um, journaling cards mm -hmm. or photo mats, you can use it for whatever you want. Sorry. Mm. Uh. Okay, here we go. Um, here is the uh, policy envelope sort of page. I used actually a lifestyle craft die um, and I did this really cool like flappy thing. And using the decorated brads as a place to hold a string to kind of do this full policy envelope sort of like layout. And this is like nice square uh, places to do journaling or square photos. Right behind here is actually another small um, journaling card tag sort of thing with also that whole collage thing which I did with my paper uh, stash. I'm trying to put this back in quickly. So this video will be more than 20 minutes, it'll be terrible. Um, even though it's supposed to be, I allow this, uh, my YouTube channel videos to be a little bit longer because um, I do want to talk about the details but not to be too long. So here we go. So this is like a, a nice kind of like magnetic um, uh, catch that keeps this directional gatefold in place for where there's obviously places for journaling and photos so you can see and this really nice Tim Holtz pattern paper it's really pretty but what this does is actually opens up to have places for smaller photos and journaling as well in this uh, magnetic closure so this is magnetic to keep it in place but this is also a magnetic closure to keep this booklet in place um, here is a simple um, like a flip out and this is actually a pocket that uh, holds a really nice uh, tag I like this really curved look to do to kind of break through like the um, very structural like rectangles you see here and uh, here is the place where the mat is at and places for uh, journaling and here actually opens up to have two um, little places we can put smaller photos about or if you want to leave the pattern paper to be you can do your journaling and photos uh, right here once again uh, the the pocket for which you can put like a photo behind right through into the frame so here I actually used the vellum and I really loved how the vellum looked on this because you get this really nice translucent um, um, texture to the whole look and it actually holds the because it's vellum it's not tracing paper right um, it holds the tag really well and uh, here's another place for which you can do more journaling and photos and um, yeah and how okay, how I did this to, in order to make it a bit more sturdy was that in order to do the pocket in which I did the flip uh, onto the the area right here I actually uh, stacked it up with cut stock on the side so if um, the camera's not be, going to be able to pick it up because that was intentional but um, be before I put the pattern paper which is on the back down um, I put the pocket first and stuck it onto the, the base and um, that the side where I'm folded in to make it into the pocket I actually um, um, reinforced it with a cardstock before I fold it in into the side and that's how I make it a bit more sturdy and be able to hold its shape a lot more because vellum is kind of like flimsy right it's like flappy flappy 
Here we go. Uh, here is like a nice hexagonal shape to kind of like remind you of bees. And it is actually a um, kind of like a hinge to kind of uh, keep this flap in place. And this flap actually opens up to have places for more uh, journaling and photos. And one of the things that I did also as on the top part of this uh, flappy thing is actually um, a place where I put two small little journaling tags behind. And because this is a pocket, you can definitely put something small behind, like a Polaroid photo as well. And these are places where you can do journaling onto. Really love the paper. Oh, so pretty. Um, this is the last uh, part, and as you can see, this is actually the end of the book. And what I did is kind of like this photo sort of thing. Um, and from the side of uh, the folders, you can actually, I actually kept two um, photo mats. Um, and this also made from that whole collage thing. And, and you can really can see that if you focus, when you make your collage thing in Magix beforehand, uh, with, uh, with a particular set of color and themes, so I have like the greens and the reds, and a little bit of like a deep tone yellow, so as you can see from here. And the same thing I did for here with the reds and the and like the yellowish brown here, and some like this nice green on the side here, and some like pale uh, aquamarine. It really helps to allow these things to be used in projects, and um, yeah, and it really works well in this project as well because Tim Holtz pattern papers tend to be a little bit more collage in nature, so it fits in really well. <coughs> and here I have two uh, um, this. Uh, giant tags, giant-ish tags, uh, with places for journaling and photos at the back. And these are stamped with um, Stamper Anonymous uh, um, um, stamps, uh, which Tim Holtz designed. Really cool. I really like the details, really, really nice. I know my voice is probably giving way now. Whoops, sorry, bump into the frame. It's holding the camera. Okay. <laughs> And so this actually opens up to have places for more journaling and photos in here as well. And this is actually a magnetic uh, place to hold even more, like kind of like a secret place to hold additional photos and journaling. And this holds some, like kind of like a folder sort of thing. Um, if, the, if the person wishes to, you can even put more um, uh, like photo mats here. You can do like a waterfall if he wants to, but I kind of want to keep like the book uh, thin because once you start putting more photos it's gonna also um, grow in bulk and here let's talk a little bit about the um, my side loading pocket so each of the signatures actually have a pocket and um, this is I'm gonna be able to present this much better here than I did on um, what you call it uh, IGTV so See this really cool thing? Cool, huh? So you're like, isn't that just um, embossing? Yes, it's just embossing. But how... Okay, so one of the things that I've actually struggled with using pigment ink and then uh, embossing or embossing with things for a particular colour is there's no way they can pick up like the design and kind of have this very glossy sort of... Um, um, ray sort of, of, of feeling that, that while well, still maintaining the crispness of the image. Because a lot of the powders which are colored tend, tend to be a bit uh, larger in granularity. So when you try and do like a kind of like um, your, your heat embossing, they will tend to look a bit, a, bit, either a bit more grainy or even if they are able to melt into each other in this sort of way, uh, you lose a lot of detail. How I, how I manage to maintain this is actually by using clear embossing powder which are much better in uh, able to keep detail as well as using a combination of dye inks to get this really nice like translucent effect or uh, quick drying pigment inks. But you get this really nice translucent effect. You really can't quite do this if you're getting like the specific color <coughs> of like embossing powder. And this is one of the ways in which you can also stretch clear embossing powder, right? So let me go grab my supplies. Oh, here we are. Uh, sorry for my fat hand. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys that actually I was using dye inks and dye inks are, and these are quick dry, dry uh, dye inks uh, even though and, and also quick drying uh, pigment inks uh, these are Versafine Claire uh, really cool uh, really nice like consistency with their Versaline, uh, Versafine line quick drying as well and very high detail but when you try to do embossing with these vi uh, directly with the embossing we're not going to 
they are not going to pick up as much of like the clear embossing ink uh, in reality. So you want to have like kind of both the best of both worlds. We can get like a lot of like the embossing powder and this really nice uh, raised effect, as well as keeping it kind of like a translucent look. Is to actually use it in combination of Versamark and your color ink. And you can also stretch, and this is also one way to really stretch your your um um your um. Uh, clear embossing powder because you don't really want to be going out there to buy an embossing powder for each and every single color that you want that, That's just madness, but um, for a lot of us which have like a, quite a bit of the ink colors We can actually just do that with this first you take your 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 stamped image and the preferred stamp image has to be like rubber You can try with photopolymer. I think they work just as well But if you use uh, silicon based then you lose quite a bit of the detail you use uh, Versamark to pick up the, the Versamark first so you have your stamp on the rubber, pick up Versamark, and then you you and then you put it onto your ink pad, and then you stamp it onto your surface. And that's how I got this color. And after that you put your and you just go through the usual usual uh, embossing um, steps and you get this really 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 nice look. It is really nice translucency. And this is even uh, quite cool. You can even do this onto pattern paper. And say, let's say you wanted to have something, say, on this. And you don't have like a, a contrasting color, right? But you don't have like this really translucency sort of... of um, so let's say the pattern paper that you're working on is quite a bit more muted. And you want to look at like a contrasting color of, say, blue versus uh, the yellow here. This is nice marigold yellow. And then uh, you use the embossing uh, method and get a really cool effect onto your pattern paper and this is one of the ways that you can really stretch the use of like your supplies so just wanted to share that with you because i thought it's really really cool and it's one of these old techniques that i've learned that kind of like not done too much with it and then when i was doing this album i was like wait i need, need to try it on this one again and so you get really nice uh, glossy um, images it's kind of like this nice translucent effect and they also keep on to the details that uh, the stamp themselves confer and it's really really hard to get when you try and get um, um, embossing powders of these colors because they tend to be of, of a slightly larger granularity yep so this is my mini album thank you guys for watching this is definitely under 20 minutes yay um, and uh, any questions or comments you can leave in the uh, comments below bye